Welcome to the Coin Bureau Weekly News Roundup. My name is Guy. And my name is Jessica, and here are the top stories in crypto this week. Crypto market drop. BTC, ETH and alts start to slide in response to growing uncertainty both inside and outside of the crypto industry. Where are crypto prices headed next? Peculiar Ethereum updates. Institutions start to accumulate ETH. Shiba Inu starts testing its layer 2. A former dev allegedly spreads FUD. And Vitalik questions Worldcoin. What does this mean for ETH? Digital ID deployed. Worldcoin launches after four years of development, with thousands reportedly lining up to have their eyes scanned for their cut of free crypto. Everything you need to know. BOJ backs off. Japan's central bank does a de facto rate hike for the second time in decades, leading to speculation that another market crash is imminent. Why you need to be paying attention. And a closer look at last week's top performing cryptos and where they could be headed next. All this and more in just a moment. Last week, the crypto market experienced abnormally muted price action considering the massive macro factors that should have moved it. If you watched our previous weekly crypto review, you'll know that the central banks of the US, the EU and Japan all announced their interest rate decisions. The Fed announced its interest rate decision on Wednesday, and it seems the crypto market responded with a small rally that resulted in a short squeeze. As you can see, most of these gains were gone in a few hours. Note that we'll be summarising the Fed's press conference later this week, so stay tuned. Now, what's surprising is that crypto prices continued to rally until Thursday, which is when the ECB announced its interest rate decision. Now, this is surprising because the ECB was more dovish than expected. Anticipation of a looser monetary policy in the EU should have resulted in a slight pump, not a dump. Well, the answer to this mystery appears to be GDP, specifically the GDP figures for Q2 in the US, which were released on the same day. These figures revealed that the US economy is growing faster than investors expected. This likely led to expectations that the Fed will have to keep raising interest rates in response. Additional evidence for this answer can also be found in the price action of major stock indices. As you can see, the S&P 500 also saw a sudden dip late on Thursday. The fact that crypto and stocks moved in tandem means it was a macro factor. The thing is that the GDP figures were released earlier in the day. So this begs the question of what the macro factor really was, and the answer could be reports from Japanese media on Thursday, which suggested that the Bank of Japan, or BOJ, was going to raise interest rates on Friday. In the end, the BOJ did no such thing, but it did make another market-moving decision. More on that later. In any case, the crypto charts look unclear. BTC's weekly chart suggests that it was painting a rising triangle pattern, which is supposed to be bullish, but it appears to have broken to the downside. If this break takes BTC below that Bollinger Band moving average this week, expect to see more downside. Interestingly, it's a different story for ETH's weekly chart against BTC. It appears to have had a bullish weekly close, which could foreshadow some gains against BTC in the short term. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that ETH will rally in fiat terms, but it's evidence of speculation returning to the crypto market. The caveat is that ETH is still looking weak against BTC on longer timeframes, such as the monthly. ETH's price saw another monthly close beneath the Bollinger Band moving average, albeit slightly in the green. This underscores the ongoing uncertainty in the crypto market, including in Ethereum's ecosystem. If you're subscribed to our weekly newsletter, you'll know there's one stablecoin in particular that could be a banana skin for ETH. Despite all of this apparent uncertainty, though, institutions have reportedly resumed accumulating ETH. According to CoinShares, institutions appear to have moved money out of Bitcoin-related funds and been moving them into altcoin-related funds, mostly Ethereum and XRP. This could explain the increase in ETH strengths against Bitcoin over the last week. 
it simultaneously reveals the reason why. The recent ruling in the SEC's ongoing lawsuit against Ripple has likely increased institutional confidence in altcoins, given that trading on exchanges is now believed to be kosher. If you watched our video about the ruling, however, you'll recall that it doesn't exactly protect other altcoins from the SEC's scrutiny, just XRP. Even then, this assumes the SEC won't appeal the rulings, which is reportedly looking more likely as the days go by. Of course, this would be bad news for alts. Until that does happen though, Ethereum and other alts could have some more wiggle room to rally, and some institutions believe they will, due to their supposed higher correlation to tech stocks. Newsflash for all of us, the Nasdaq has been on a ripping rally since the start of the year thanks to AI, and crypto has as well. This supposed correlation would be easier to understand if Ethereum's ecosystem wasn't riddled with numerous multi-billion dollar meme coins. The largest of the lot is of course Shiba Inu with a market cap of almost 5 billion. In Sheep's defense, its developers have been hard at work creating a brand new layer 2. On Friday, Shiba Inu's devs deployed the testnet for the bridge between the layer 2, dubbed Shibarium and Ethereum. While Shibarium is scheduled for launch sometime in August and likely a result in another wave of meme coin frenzy. This would likely be bullish for ETH as all meme coins have been. On that note, one of the biggest Ethereum memes is the idea that a transition from proof of work to proof of stake made it environmentally friendly. This has been overblown, at least according to Lane Rettig, a former Ethereum core developer. And that's not all that has been overblown. In a recent Coindesk article, Lane pointed out that many of the computers that were mining Ethereum have since switched to mining of other altcoins, meaning there probably wasn't a significant decline in energy consumption. At the same time, hundreds of thousands of Ethereum validators have been spun up. Lane also pointed out that proof of stake is arguably less secure than proof of work. In his own words, Unlike POW, a cartel controlling more than half of the stake can silently, invisibly, and permanently capture the entire network. A pretty scary comment considering recent revelations. Regardless, Lane made it really clear that he is happy that Ethereum has transitioned to proof of stake, but underlined the fact that it's not necessarily all it's been cut out to be. Its benefits and drawbacks have yet to be fully understood compared to proof of work, which is a fair critique coming from a former core developer. And speaking of critiques, Ethereum's creator Vitalik Buterin also had a thing or two to say about WorldCoin. And by a thing or two, I mean a very, very, very long blog post. It included everything you would think and effectively concluded by saying that WorldCoin will fail if it can't get enough orbs out in the world. Yep, in case you missed the news, there's a crypto project called WorldCoin that has had millions of people around the world scanning their eyeballs for crypto, over 2 million to be exact. If you watched our first video about WorldCoin, you'll know it was co-founded by Sam Altman. For context, Sam is the co-founder of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and other AI tools that have taken the internet by storm and AI-related tech stocks to the moon. Now, Sam created WorldCoin to address two issues he believe will arise because of AI, namely deepfakes and enormous income inequality. To solve the former, Sam wants to scan everyone's eye. That's because everyone's iris, the colored part of the eye, is unique and very difficult to fake. In fact, WorldCoin's orbs were specially designed so that it's impossible to fake an iris scan. This makes iris scans the ideal basis for digital ID. Now, to solve the latter problem, Sam wants to roll out Universal Basic Income, or UBI, which will eventually be paid for using profits generated by AI. This is where the WLD token is supposed to play a role. The idea is that everyone who scans their eye will get a portion of WLD and receive it as a de facto UBI over the years. So, by now, you've probably got lots of questions and even more concerns. Trust us when we say you're not alone. 
Almost every single person who has heard of WorldCoin has had the instinctual reaction that this is a bad idea. But as with all bad ideas, this ultimately depends on the payout involved. Right, folks? In all seriousness, the WLD token quickly listed on the top cryptocurrency exchanges after WorldCoin launched, and it has everyone wondering if WLD is worth it. Now, we'll be doing an in-depth video about WorldCoin later this week that will give you the long answer. For now, we'll give you the short answer. If you plan on buying WLD or already have, be aware that it has an aggressive vesting schedule and no utility for the time being. In other words, there's lots of new supply and not many demand drivers. The fact that it's already listed on most major non-US exchanges means it's about as available as it will be. If you plan on lining up to scan your eye at one of the orbs to get WLD for free or already have, be aware that the WorldCoin website specifies that you can only claim one WLD per week for the time being. That's two to three dollars per week at today's prices. Some would say that's hardly worth scanning your eye for. Never mind the fact that the orb isn't fully open sourced, so you have to trust that WorldCoin isn't doing something questionable with your iris scans. Now, to be fair to WorldCoin, the fact of the matter is that cryptocurrency does need some form of decentralized digital ID if it wants to continue to evolve. To many, WorldCoin is not the answer as it is technically not as decentralized as it claims to be and its incentives are questionable to say the least. Consider that Sam basically created the problem and is now offering a solution which will eventually come at a price. This all assumes that AI will create the problem that he foresees and that being catalogued by a centralized entity is the only solution. As you'll see, both assumptions are questionable. Now when it comes to macro-related news, the biggest headline was the Bank of Japan's decision to loosen its yield curve control. For those that are unfamiliar, yield curve control is when central banks buy up government debt to try and keep longer-term interest rates low. They do this because the only rates that they can directly control are the short-term ones. Now, believe it or not, but the BOJ has been doing this for decades and has also been keeping a shorter-term interest rate at zero. This is simply because the Japanese government has so much debt that if interest rates rose, they would go bankrupt. This is only a part of why the BOJ's decision is so significant. If you watched our recent viral video about what the central banks are planning, you'll know that if the BOJ raises interest rates, either by backing off yield curve control or raising interest rates, then it could crash, well, it could crash everything. That's because the Japanese investors are heavily invested in overseas assets. If interest rates were to rise in Japan, then it would cause Japanese investors to sell off some of their overseas assets to take advantage of the higher interest rates at home. This could crash the foreign stock markets and also raise interest rates elsewhere as Japanese investors sell foreign government debt. So raising interest rates would also cause the Japanese yen to rally and this could cause even more market volatility. That's because of something called the carry trade. Institutional investors borrowing lots of Japanese yen because interest rates are low and trading it for higher yielding assets, thereby earning a carry. So. Imagine a scenario where institutional investors borrow millions of Japanese yen based on assumptions that Japanese interest rates would stay low and the yen would continue to weaken. They would immediately be forced to sell all of the other assets they bought to repay their yen loans. This selling of other assets for yen would cause it to rally even more. This would be further amplified by the fact that almost every institution is heavily short the yen. These heavily short institutions would be liquidated, causing the yen to rally even more, forcing more carry traders to sell other assets, and so on and so forth. If this is all too complicated to follow, then you can keep it simple just by watching the yen. And as you see, it rallied like crazy on Thursday. This is fundamentally why the stock market and the crypto market saw a flash crash that same evening. Everyone who leveraged thought that they were about to get wrecked. Oddly enough, when the BOJ came out and announced that it would loosen its yield curve control, the yen dropped back down to levels that it had seen in recent days. 
This was probably because the BOJ wasn't nearly as hawkish as the media had people believe, but it's still more significant than you think. That's because it could mark a new beginning in a new trend from the BOJ, a trend towards gradually higher short and long-term interest rates. So whether it will manage to raise rates without bankrupting the government or crashing the markets, that still remains to be seen, but is something to watch. And lo and behold, the Bank of Japan has had to intervene to keep yields below the new band, which is exactly what happened the first time it did this back in December. Money printer, go brr. So, turning to the top performing cryptos last week, we had MakerDAO, ShibaSwap's Bone, Dogecoin, Quant Network, and Shiba Inu. Starting with MakerDAO, its MKR token continues to rally because of the recent buyback mechanism that was implemented by the DeFi protocol. As bullish as it may be, it appears that crypto VC firms have been cashing out. This is a bearish sign, and it could be the tip of an even bigger bearish iceberg. Speculation aside, this makes MKR's price action somewhat unpredictable. The weekly chart suggests that it still has a bit of room to rally before it hits the next zone of price resistance at around 1400. MKR seems to be hitting a seven-week rallying record. Logic says it will stop, but, well, we know how crypto can go. Next up, we have ShibaSwap's Bone, which will include with Shiba Inu's SHIB. That's because both cryptos rallied for the same reason, the upcoming release of the Shibarium Layer 2. For reference, Bone will be used to pay for transaction fees on Shibarium, hence its second place ranking. Funnily enough, Bone appears to be in a long-term uptrend, though it's hard to say much of this price action is genuine. That's because Bone doesn't have much exchange support. The silver lining is that a listing on a top offshore exchange could take Bone much higher. So, take note. SHIB's price action tells a different story, however. Its price appears to have flatlined over the last year, and its recent price action still has it below the Bollinger Band moving average on the weekly. The silver lining there is that this has caused a massive Bollinger Band squeeze, which could break to the upside. As for Dogecoin, meanwhile, Doge rallied for the same reason it always does, good old Elon Musk. In case you haven't noticed, Twitter recently rebranded to X in a bid to become an all-in-one platform that will include payments. This, combined with the Doge symbol in Elon's X bio, has caused some hype. Similar to SHIB, Doge is seeing a Bollinger Band squeeze on the weekly. The difference is that Doge is above the moving average, meaning it has a higher chance of squeezing to the upside. The caveat is that it faces a lot of resistance on the way up, and we've seen lots of fakeouts recently. And finally, we have Quant Network, with QNT rallying for unknown reasons. If you happen to know why, drop a comment down below, because we'd all love to know. As far as price action goes, QNT has hit the Bollinger Band moving average on the weekly and is in the middle of a massive squeeze. If it gets rejected here, it'll likely squeeze to the downside. Conversely, a continuation of the current rally could result in a squeeze to the upside. And if you want to know why altcoins are pumping on a daily basis, be sure to check out the Coin Bureau Telegram channel. The link is, of course, down in the description. And that is all for today's Coin Bureau Weekly Crypto Review. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and bell icon too. Don't forget to check out our deals page where we have massive discounts and airdrop bonuses of up to $40,000 on some of the best exchanges, only for the viewers of this channel. You can find the link to that resource and many others in the description below. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in next week's episode. Thank you.